Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, we are continuing with our weekly series of Shirim, the Torah of Recovery with the Light Revealed, where we illuminate the process of recovery with the light of the Torah, and we reveal the pathways of recovery within the Torah itself. Entering into a new book, entering into the Sefer of Bamidbar, of wandering in the desert, the finding oneself caught, wandering in that place between the escape prior to the arrival. The escape was Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The escape was leaving Mitzrayim, getting free from whatever was holding a person down. And we had not yet arrived in Eretz Yisrael. We had not yet arrived in that place of the destination. Bamidbar represents that suspended middle ground that exists after the beginning, prior to the end. It's that middle place that the development appears to be arrested, where it seems that the initial burst of enthusiasm, which we thought would get us to the end result, has dried up and died down and has left us stranded in the middle, and that the promised land or the finish line rests far beyond capacity, betwixt and between, stuck within that liminal space of having escaped what was holding me down, yet not arriving at the place that I need to arrive at. And this is the place where the Torah comes from, the Bamidbar, the desert experience, the place devoid of clarity, the place devoid of destination, the wandering nature of the Midbar, the empty, vacuous nature of the Midbar is ultimately the very site in which the Torah is going to be revealed. Mi Midbar Matana. Mi Midbar Matana, there's a gift from the desert itself, meaning it's not just the location in which the Torah was offered, but rather the act of revelation takes place specifically within the desert-like experience to the degree that the desert-like experience is a prerequisite to the experience of revelation. It's not just that the gift was given in the desert. It's because we experience the desert experience that we have now the capacity of receiving the gift. What's the desert experience? A person who empties themselves out, a person who recognizes that they're barren and empty in the destitution of their spirit, devoid of the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that illuminates it. Without Hashem's light, without the illumination that Hashem gives us in each and every moment, that our higher power bestows upon us at every minute through acts of grace beyond any capacity of our ability to earn it, without that we would be dead like a desert, we would be empty like a desert with nothing of our own. This is not an acknowledgement of human frailty or human weakness as a result of some primordial failure. Rather, this is the acceptance of the human condition, which is, by definition, to be a deficient creature. And when we accept the deficiency of our creatureliness, when we orient ourselves to the elements of the midbar within us, where we're thirsty for water, and we're hungry for food, and we're yearning for clarity, and we're searching, 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 without knowing how the redemption is going to emerge, it's specifically within that moment of powerlessness, midbar matana, that the Torah emerges within the mind of the individual, that the individual is capable of grasping something. And so we see that contrary to the orientation that most people have, which is that it's specifically the quest towards power that is going to bring about the strength that we develop in this world, or the truth that we need, what the Torah reveals to us is that it's specifically through the powerlessness, specifically through the encounter of the desert-like experience, a person who makes themselves like a desert, a person who acknowledges their inherent lack, a person who acknowledges the impossibility and the idolatrous impulse inherent within any desire towards some semblance of perfection. The Midbar experience is that place where as a speaking creature, I stutter in my speech, I'm silent in my speech. The Midbar and the Medaber are two elements that are unified together because both the self and the orientation of the Midbar are both the acknowledgement of the inherent destitution that rests in any element of being a creature. The only thing that is whole, the only thing that is Shalim, the only thing that contains the light is the infinite creator, the Boyre. HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides to bestow his light upon us through the receptivity of our capacity to receive that chesed. It is not as a result of the actions that we do. It is the miracle of the daily reprieve of saving us from the condition of being human and being able to tap into revelation and calmness and comfort and equanimity and all rightness and good enoughness and enoughness. That miracle that HaKadosh Baruch Hu bestows upon us, the only clea, the only vessel that we're capable of uncovering for it is going to be becoming like a midbar, emptying ourselves out. That emptying of the self out is not a denial of my strength. Adar Abba, it's a strengthening of my strength because I'm not denying what I'm okay at. I'm not denying the strength. I'm just fully acknowledging that the strength is not my own making. I have not 
created this strength. Hashem is the one giving me the strength. I am a shliach. I am a messenger towards a mission that is far greater than the capacity of my strength could ever carry out. But when I identify with the person who has sent me on the mission, which is the infinite creator, blessed be he, my higher power, at that point, I gain infinite strength with relinquishing any desire towards ownership over those strengths. It's not because I've earned it. It's because I've emptied myself out like a midbar to be able to receive it. And it's specifically from there that the light of the Torah emerges. It's specifically from there that the light of acceptance emerges. One of the elements of the midbar is that it's composed of sands, granules of sand. Now the sand represents the whole, the sand represents the dust, the sand represents that which is devoid of the illumination of spirit, that which is the opposite of Shabbos. And one of the reasons that the whole represents this deficiency or this emptiness is because of the granule nature of the sand. The sand is innumerable. The sand is many, many, many particular, particular, tiny, irreducible sized points that in their collection begin to appear in one mass lump or one massive expression of sand. The sand is a unity that is in truth a separation. There's myriad, myriad, myriad granules of sand that appear to be unified, but in truth, they're particularized in all manners of particularization, separation, differentiation, concealment, all of the elements that shatter the original unity of our experience and break it down into confusing points and disparity. And it's specifically in the sand of the desert that a person comes to understand the secret of the desert. Because in the sand of the desert, when a person stops trying to pretend that the desert is one fell swoop, and a person acknowledges that everything is composed of singular granules of sand, a person learns the importance of each and every granule of sand. The desert is a destinationless place. It's a place where the tracks of the individual are covered over in the next moment that they stop walking them. The sand and the sand and the windiness of the sand covers over all possibilities of progress and directionality to the degree that a person is perpetually going in circles without destination. And when a person finds their experiences or their encounters to be devoid of an orientation towards a goal and rather just repetitive, the natural tendency of the person is to deny the validity of those moments, to deny the validity of those granules of sand which don't lead anywhere. The pirurim, the separate points that don't appear to be any part of a cohesive experience of moving forward. But it's specifically the particular elements of the sand that teach us that it's specifically the one by one by one by one. When I value and I identify each and every granule of sand, will I eventually come to understand how all of those granules of sand compose a whole that is greater than the sum total of its parts and how the appearance of unity only comes about by the significant value that's placed on each and every step, each and every granule of sand. That's what Klai Yisrael had to understand in the Midbar. They had to understand the interbalance between the individual part and the collective whole, the significance of the ego's specific specificity and individuality, and at the same point, the secret of Bittal, which is being part of a whole that is far greater than my personal identity. This secret of being counted, what happens in Mambidbar is the Jewish people are counted. They're arranged into their categories, they're arranged into their tribes, and the secret of the tribe is that you have the many that are contained within a singular framework that each and every person is both fundamentally significant and counted as an individual. And at the same point, the individual counting is there to create the sum total that is greater than the sum of its parts. But it's the interbalance, it's the impossible delicate dance between the value of the individual as well as the invaluable nature of the nullification of the individual within the whole of the selflessness. It's the balance between self and self that is both the individual granule of sand as well as the totality of sand in its fullness. The Meshiloach says, the Meshiloach says that when each person is being counted, it was as if they were the only individual to have ever existed. When that person was being counted, it was as if the feeling that was emergent in their heart through their encounter with the Tzaddik Emes, with Moshe Rabbeinu, the Hetzoitzis of Das of Moshe, was the revelation that they themselves were the entire center of reality and everybody else was periphery. They were the center point. But each and every person felt that way. Each and every person had to be counted in their utmost significance and their own most singularity. But at the very same point, that was fully true for each and every person, the proper balance between power and powerlessness, individuality and the whole, the, the self and selflessness. And this is what is oriented to by the sand itself, by the many particulars of sand that give birth to the fullness of sand. That's where the Bamidbar experience brings us. 
If a person feels destitute and a person is aware that none of the power that we express in this world is of our own, so then we lose sight sometimes of our ability to choose the destination towards which we're going to go if life is just the singular process of moment after moment after moment. But it's specifically in that place of the Midbar experience where we empty ourselves out and we taste the light of Bittu, where we say, yes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I am just a shliach for you. I don't have an individualized identity in terms of what I'm doing in this world. I'm representative of you, and therefore I have infinite strength, just like you're infinite. It's in that place that a person comes to understand the secret of Bamidbar Matana, that to value each and every particular element of something because it contains the whole in it. And the whole could not exist without that particular thing. And to live in the counterbalance and the interbalance between those two things, between the Klal and the Prat, which is ultimately the entire secret of what the Torah is coming to teach us. How to balance the moments of general experience that feel clear and, and, and powerful and open and connected, and how to grapple with the particularized moments of experience, which seems to be so devoid of connectivity and so devoid of the light. And the secret of the Bamidbar experience and the counting and the granules of sand that compose all of the sand, which is why Klal Yisrael are compared to as the sand which can be counted, but it will be counted into an innumerable number. The secret of focusing on the individual points while still recognizing that the sum total exceeds what the individual points can possibly be expressing. It's in that place that we uncover the light of learning how to receive the Torah, learning how to properly live a life of illumination. Because when it comes to Torah learning, when it comes to the orientation towards bettering ourselves, towards the process and the illumination of the path, that's what the Torah is. It's a lashon of ha'ara. It's an illumination of a path, the path that an individual is walking on. Very often, it can feel too big to accomplish, too big to complete, too overwhelming to continue. Why? Because we're looking at the path as a singular step towards a destination. And an orientation towards that future destination, then every step appears to be devoid and missing and not there yet. But what we have to learn to focus on is the value of each and every step. In terms of the Torah, each and every word of the Torah com contains the possibility of redemption. Each and every letter of the Torah, the entirety of the Torah can be reduced into the singular drop of ink, that irreducible dot in the middle of the base, which represents all that can possibly be expressed. And every word is a mitzvah b'fnei atzmo. And every moment is a mitzvah b'fnei atzmo of learning the Torah. The Torah is composed of individualized parts that create a sum total that is greater than the sum of itself. As Rabbi Nachman says that each and every word of the Torah, each and every sentence of the Torah is the redemption of the self in and of itself, even if it's in, unintelligible. It's not about the connectivity of the thematics of it. It's sometimes about just tapping into the singular letter of the spiritual experience. It might not even make out a word. It's a singular letter, but nevertheless, it's a singular letter that contains the potential of the all, because everything can be brought back down to that tiny unit that recognition that in the Torah, in spiritual experience, in the path of recovery, I need to learn the value of each and every granule of sand, and only then will I be able to come out from that place of the singular granules of sand to a sum total that is greater than the sum of its parts. This is fundamentally true in spiritual experience and the process of recovery where yes, we need to count. Yes, we need to develop the time. Yes, we need to develop the days of success. Yes, we need to be able to identify the track record of our spiritual growth and our psychological development. But in the end of the day, the reason that we count is not to go from a one to a two, to a three, to a four, to a five, to a six, and then to a 10 and to a 20, et cetera, et cetera. So that when I'm standing by 3,756, I am, I am fighting for that big number at this point because all counting is actually doing is one, 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 one. And then when I hit a unit of 10 ones, that's what I refer to as 10. And then when I hit another unit of 90 ones, that's what I refer to as 100. 100, the number 100 never stops being 100 ones. Each and every moment is fundamentally significant. All that exists is this moment in front of a person. All that exists is the singular kernel of, gran, of sand that contains the potential of the entire desert. And then once we experience that moment and it moves on to the next one, then we realize, oh, that experience was just part of the endless flow of those same experiences of doing the same thing over and over again with the renewed urgency of as if I'm doing it for the very first time. And that's the secret of being counted. And that's the secret of finding ourselves and finding stability within the midbar. The midbar is a place of endless, aimless wandering. And it seems that it's devoid of the conclusion that we so desire. As we understand, this is a book where Moshe Rabbeinu ultimately is confronting the very fact that he can't enter into Eretz Yisrael. This is the futility of what the seemingly experience of not gaining what I so desperately need is. And the book of Bamidbar is coming to teach us that it's specifically in our acceptance of the value inherent within each and every moment, irrespective of some general perspective of where I need to get to in the future, but rather the moment itself, the grain of sand itself, the number itself, the self itself in this moment. 
It's the inherent value within that. And when we can uncover the inherent value within that, the number that rests at the heart of each and every one of our souls, the utter significance and the hyper significance that each and every one of us carry and that each and every moment carries and that each and every place carries, only then can we come to the secret of the cloud, only then can we come to the secret of moving into Eretz Yisrael, of entering into that place of full redemption, Be'ezrus Hashem.